Welcome to the Clean My Space channel. My name is Melissa Maker. I'm an accidental cleaning expert and I am joining you live from my kitchen, just in front of my refrigerator, because today we are gonna be talking about the most efficient and effective way to clean a fridge. Now, as an accidental cleaning expert, I'm someone who hates to clean, but has to know the most efficient and effective way to get the job done right in the least amount of time because in 2006 I started a cleaning business. Long story short, I've cleaned a lot of fridges and spring cleaning is here. You might also be moving. Your fridge just might also be gross like mine. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the method on how to clean your fridge. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and a quick update, we've made over our website somewhat and we now have a printables section on there. So uh, part of what's included in that section is a very detailed spring cleaning guide. It's like 20 pages long, but it goes deep. We also have a guide up there on exactly what we're doing today, how to clean a fridge. So go check out that printable section. If you haven't seen it yet, I've got a link for you down below. First things first, you gotta empty the fridge. Don't be judgmental here. Just pull everything out and get it on your counter. What I did instead of unplugging my fridge is I actually turned off the cooling mechanism so that I wasn't wasting electricity during this process. You just have to make sure that you turn it back on at the end of the cleaning. Now, as with any cleaning task, I'm just working from the top to the bottom. That way I'm being strategic and I'm not forgetting anything. Looking into someone's fridge feels oddly personal. You've now seen what mine looks like on the inside. It's not gorgeous. And I'd love to know in the comments down below, are you someone who is like me and just kind of generally puts things in there, tries to Tetris it around as long as it fits and you can find it, you're okay? Or are you somebody that has to have like an MTV Cribs style fridge. Everything has to be in its beautiful place. Your vegetables are color coded. Your yogurts go here. Your juices go there. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of fridge organizer or not you are. Next up, it's time to remove the baskets, the bins and the shelves. If you're not too familiar with your fridge, I would say to do this slowly and carefully. That way you don't break anything. Having been in the cleaning business for a long time, I can tell you I have broken one or two fridge shelves and I've learned over the years, do it gingerly. Now I'm going to pre-treat the inside of the fridge with a simple all-purpose cleaner. We'll deal with that after. Next up, I'm sprinkling some baking soda in all of these little trays and bins and on the shelves, as well as spraying it with all-purpose cleaner. This is going to help provide a little bit of extra abrasion, deodorization, and stain removal. I've got a cleaning toothbrush, a microfiber cloth, and some all-purpose cleaner, and I'm going to tackle the inside of this fridge, moving from the top to the bottom, working my way from left to right. Now I'm respraying any areas that I clean only because I wanna make sure that they're nice and wet when I'm actually giving them a wipe down. That way if there are any stains, they'll come off easier. The cleaning toothbrush is there to get into those little grooves, particularly in the crisper drawer and the shelf area. Uh, you know, you can find like dried up pieces of lettuce or small little chunks of cheese that you really can't get out any other way aside from flicking them out with a little toothbrush. Finally, I'm tackling the gaskets, which are those little rubber seals around the doors. Those can get dirty and filthy over time, so use your cleaning toothbrush, give it a good little scrub, and then wipe it clean with a microfiber cloth. You can also do your door hinges at this time too. Now I'll take this double-sided sponge, I make sure it's damp, and then I'm going to tackle each one of these shelves and bins and drawers. It doesn't take too long. What I find is when they've had a chance to pre-treat, they clean up much easier and that baking soda really helps remove any of the extra gunky stuff that's been built up. Now for these bigger items, I like to clean them and replace them one at a time because frankly, it can be really overwhelming to find counter space, particularly when all of your refrigerated items are on your counter as well. So for these bigger things, I would just clean them, dry them and put them right back. Now it's important that you dry everything really well because you don't wanna have excess moisture going back into the fridge after you've cleaned it. 
Again, if you're unsure how your shelves or your bins get reinstalled, just work slowly and make sure that you don't break or damage anything because these fridge components can be so expensive to replace. These panels of glass are also very challenging to work with, so just move slowly, handle them gently, and when you're cleaning and rinsing and replacing them, just take a little bit of extra time. You've gotta take my word on this one. What can be particularly difficult to clean in your fridge are these little rings or stubborn spots that have just sat there and built up over time. That is what's gonna require the most amount of cleaning, but that baking soda and all-purpose cleaner combo really helps remove any of that stickiness. The other thing you might notice, particularly in your crisper drawers, are stains from, you know, zucchini or broccoli or kale or whatever have you that sat at the bottom of the bin for a long time and eventually discolored it. This is something that you might be able to remove with a bit of baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. So you can always give that trick a shot as well. Now these bins came out pretty nice and clean, so I'm pretty happy. My fridge, I think, actually looks better than the day I moved in. Now I'm going to start filling it back up. What I do is have a microfiber cloth and a little bit of all-purpose cleaner handy. And before I replace an item, of course I make sure, yeah, I still want it, I still need it, and it's still edible. And the next thing I'll do is give the bottom of that container a wipe. That's why you see me doing this in fast motion. I'm just holding, wiping, replacing. And anything that I'm not keeping, I'm just leaving on the counter. This is also a great chance for you to take inventory of what's in your fridge, what you might be out of, you know, do I need more pesto? Is that coconut milk just about finished? You know, you can really start to keep track of things and make a mental note of what you're looking for. Always important to replace your box of baking soda. You should be doing this four times a year or at the change of every season. It just helps your fridge stay a little fresher and your food tastes better. Your floor is actually pretty crusty at the end of a fridge cleaning, so you wanna make sure that you give that a nice clean. And of course, I turn the temperature back on in the fridge as well. Well, now you know how to masterfully clean a fridge. And if you wanna tag me with your before and after on Instagram, I would love to see it. So please do so at Clean My Space. Quick reminder to go and check out our printable section over on cleanmyspace.com. I've got a link for you down below. We've got that major spring cleaning printable and we've also got a comprehensive fridge cleaning guide chock full of way more detail than I got into in this video. If spring cleaning is on your brain, you can go ahead and check out our spring cleaning marathon video, which will definitely keep you going throughout this season. And if you wanna support the Clean My Space channel, you can always do so by subscribing and by checking out makersclean.com, which is where all of our microfiber cloths and cleaning tools are available. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.